For more analysis on China, we're now joined by Vasilis Gionakis, Lombard Ode Global Head of FX Strategy. So Vasilis, first of all, welcome to uh, the new shop, right? You left Unicredit to go to Lombard. What does it mean that China GDP is a little bit below estimates, but it's still 6.5 percent, but then they're warning of financial risks on the fact that they have it under control? I think on the whole it's, it's, it's relatively positive news for markets in, in the sense that the authorities are being su successful in engineering a soft landing. Everyone is expecting that uh, Chinese GDP growth is going to slow down and the main fear in the market has been whether we're going for a soft or a hard landing. And I think the evidence so far, our analysis shows that basically we're heading for a soft landing and the authorities have been quite successful in, in that respect. Uh, if you look at the whole host of the other numbers, because today we've also got uh, the fixed asset investment, we've got retail sales, we've got industrial production, it came broadly in line and I think uh, that recent downward trend in fixed asset investment investment uh, appears to be slowing, potentially bottoming out. Um, on the whole, I take, it to be, uh, I take it to mean that we are being faced with a relatively stable Chinese uh, growth environment. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you have uh, a number of reassurances, a number of steps being taken by the authorities in order to stabilize the economy and ensure that the financial risk, as you mentioned before, doesn't get out of control. So I, I, wouldn't, I, I don't think that we are headed right. towards a major crisis. What does Remnimbi do from here? Our central scenario is that it stays stable uh, where it is, uh, and, and that's largely predicated on the assumption that uh, the authorities have been very firm uh, uh, to uh, ensure FX stability, meaning that they wouldn't like the basket to start uh, converging towards uh, new lows. Now, whether we cross seven or not, I don't think it's the big question. The big question is whether we cross it seven on a sustainable way or whether we do uh, a dollar China run up to seven, then we converge lower. If uh, Our central scenario is that, as I said, we're going to stabilize around Revers where we are right now. But let me say that if we do see a sustainable break above the seven level, this will have severe repercussions for the rest of the global economy as well as emerging market currencies. Vasilius, just simply put, is it a good time to speculate in foreign exchange? I looked through your research at Lombard ODA, and what, what I can simply see is a real stabilization, a quiet. That's not the best time to speculate, or is there a real opportunity to be had in the next year? I, oh, I think it's definitely an opportunity for next year. Um, basically, the way we see right now things is that... Uh, uh, we think the dollar has really run ahead, has really been hyped by this uh, uh, fiscal stimulus uh, implemented in, in the U.S. And there is also a number of risks. It's the global trade, it's political uncertainty, it's uh, uh, concerns about uh, Chinese growth. And these things seem to be offsetting each other, and that's why you see tight rages. But as we move towards 2019 and some of these risks start subsiding, what will come out, I think, on the surface is the fact that we have a very ill-timed fiscal stimulus in the U.S., which will lead to higher inflation, compressing U.S. real rates, and it will lead to a lower dollar. So I think, uh, you know, it's an opportunity because from a medium-term perspective, I think the dollar goes lower from here. Within that, is it a rate analysis or a capital flow analysis? I think it's actually both, uh, to be honest with you. It's, it's, uh, on the rate side, I think how much is priced in, not just in the U.S., but how much is priced in the U.S. relative to what is being priced into the rest of the world. If you see a number of other countries, they do have very strong uh, economic fundamentals, and, and the, the rates pricing is simply not there. Uh, and it's a flow analysis. If you look at the past 10 years, uh, international investment position in, in the U.S. has ballooned to unprecedented levels. The, the U.S. has been a magnet for uh, capital flows. And as in 2019, it starts becoming more evident that this fiscal stimulus was ill-timed. It will not lead to an increase in potential growth. U.S. risk premiums are going to increase. And I think that we're going to start seeing outflows from the U.S. Uh, outflows to a point where it actually puts in question Fed hikes? No, I don't think that it will be that extreme. Obviously, the U.S. still will maintain uh, a, a safe haven status. It will have to, take, to be extraordinary changes, extraordinary structural changes. It will take years until this notion disappears. I think the flow is going to be gradual, and I don't think that it will put the Fed hikes uh, into question.
Okay, it's 2020 crunch time because it's the end of the uh, the, the tax, uh, you know. Uh, the I think tax we were talking cuts. about 2019 so far, so now we move to 20. Well, 2020, I, I hear right bubbling under the surface that actually um, a recession could hit in 2020, look, which is quite close. That, that that's a very fair point. That's a very fair point. Uh, our central scenario is that 2019 we're going to see a slowdown in global right. growth, but no major downturn. Uh, I think what happens in 2020 is going to depend, one, on how far uh, the Fed goes uh, and uh, to what extent some of uh, the recent um, uh, flaring up of risk aversion that we've seen in a number of emerging markets starts becoming systemic risk. I think, you know, from a purely statistical perspective, as you move further out, the probability of a recession, of course, increases because the cycle is, is already extremely mature.